Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. My son gets jealous of his sister's Christmas gift and flips out. After that, my parents kicked out my husband over a joke. And after that, am I the jerk for selling my dad's house even though his widow lives there? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen has to return her Christmas gift. You mean the stress ball that you got for me from Dollar Tree? So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. My son gets jealous of his sister's Christmas gift and flips out. Our son is 22 and our daughter is 26. She bought a house in July. We know that moving into a new home always comes with unexpected costs right after you've probably depleted most of your funds. So for Christmas, we gave her $4,000. Our son, we gave a few different things, totaling somewhere around $800. Our daughter had to work on Christmas, but we did Christmas on the 26th, and she stayed with us for the holidays from then until yesterday. Our son still lives with us, and today he told us both that he didn't want to say anything while his sister was here, but his feelings were hurt by the disparity in the value of the gifts. We explained that the gifts we got him were tailored to his interests, but his sister has just passed a big life milestone where money is more important to her right now than sentiment. He said it's still hurtful because it feels like we're more proud of her than him. My wife got really frustrated when he said that and asked why he would choose the least charitable interpretation of our actions. He said that's just how he felt and he couldn't control it. I said that we didn't give her money because we were more proud, but because we had experience being new homeowners and knowing that something always breaks in the first six months and it's always expensive. He said that was all fine and good, but it still hurt to get a worse present and feel like an afterthought. My wife asked if he expected us to get him $4,000 worth of gifts. He said no, but he expected the gifts between him and his sister to be equal. My wife said that's the same thing, and my son said it isn't. He said we could have given her the monetary equivalent of what we gave him. I told him that it isn't really fair for him to decide how much we spend on someone else's gift. Furthermore, cash is less personal than gifts, so giving her a cash equivalent to what he got would be her getting the worst gift. He said we just weren't listening to him and just justifying. My wife said we didn't need to justify anything and he was being entitled. At that point, he said he didn't want to talk unless everyone was civil and he went to his room. He skipped lunch, breakfast for him today, and when he left for work, he didn't say goodbye, even though I was right by the door. My wife is irritated, and my son is clearly resenting us. I can't really decide if we're in the wrong here. On the one hand, we should be able to give our money to whoever we want. On the other hand, I never want to hurt my son's feelings. Were we wrong? You're the jerk for doing this at Christmas. I'm the youngest of four siblings. My oldest sister is 10 years older than me, so we definitely reached milestones at different times. Things like wedding money, housewarming gifts and money, graduation gifts obviously came at different times for each of us and were not tied to group holidays like Christmas. You could have given your daughter an $800 check or gift for Christmas and $3,200 for closing on the house at a different time and setting. Then you could tell your son, we will be so excited to give you a gift of money to help out when you buy your first home. Instead, now it's a very disproportional Christmas gift, which is sure to raise some jealousy. Edit. My judgment is very light and you seem like very generous parents who want to help both of your kids get ahead in life. I definitely don't think that you owe your son more now than an explanation and an apology for timing and reaction to his concerns. In the future, I would just keep shared gift opening times in kind for both kids and stick to milestone gifts timed with the milestone. Edit. After getting a lot of rent-free comments about the son, from OP's comments, it seems like the daughter lived at home until the house purchase to save up money and they have no issues with the son living at home now and want the same opportunity for him, so I don't really see it as an applicable factor in the judgment. There was a clear invalidation of your son's feelings. He sounded like he was being really respectful and brought up valid points as to why he was feeling a certain way. Instead of being open about the whole situation, you started gaslighting. It's a good way to stop your kid from wanting to approach you about things in the future. You're the jerk. This was the big sticking point for me. Don't you want your son to feel comfortable coming to talk to you when he has a problem in the future? Is your son going to feel comfortable talking about his feelings and issues with mom and dad when mom immediately starts attacking him? Also, and this is just a suspicion here, but mom got real defensive and came out attacking hard when she wasn't even called out. 
He was just expressing his feelings. Her response was not proportionate, the point where she doth protest too much. Of course they don't want their son to express his feelings unless he's being always grateful and compliments them. If he has something slightly negative to say, he's an ungrateful spoiled brat, at least in his mother's eyes. Honestly, the son sounded more mature in this situation. He waited for his sister to leave before approaching the situation and left the conversation when the mom started verbally going off on him. The parents could have kept the difference, $3,200 in a savings account, and if the daughter needed it, they could give it to her. I already bought a house three times and never had bad things happen that tanned my experience. It's called budgeting for the house. You don't buy a house without having some extra on the side for some unexpected event. I'm not saying my experience is everyone's experience, but OP is assuming that something bad will happen. But he and his wife could have waited to see if it happens or not. If it does, they could have stepped out and helped. Nonetheless, they should put the same amount aside for when their son buys or rents a house. It's not even a small amount either. I mean, $4,000 and $800 is a big difference. If you plan to give him $4,000 when he gets a house, then maybe no biggie. Also, don't know why your wife is so irritated by him explaining the clear disparity. I'd expect my kid to be upset if I made one a sandwich and not the other. Not the jerk. I feel like people on here hate favoritism so much that they think you have to treat your kids equally every second of their lives. The fact is, when kids are different ages and at different places in life, they'll be going through different milestones at different times. For example, if one of your kids had gotten their license that year and you got them a car for Christmas, that doesn't mean you need to spend a car's worth of money on your other kid that Christmas. That would be ridiculous. As long as you treat the kids the same in the long run and help them out similarly for these milestones, it's okay for there to be a little disparity every once in a while. Well, who do you think is the jerk? The parents or their son? Please let us know. Never ask a bunch of entitled kids on Reddit if $800 was enough for your son for Christmas. My parents literally got me a stress ball from the dollar store and I couldn't be happier. I've been sitting here squeezing it the whole time. My parents kicked out my husband over a joke. I've been married to my second husband, Mike, for four years now. He's a jokester and loves to crack jokes all the time. He especially likes to joke with my brother, Ethan, and his wife. Ethan used to be okay with it until he started complaining about Mike taking it too far with his jokes. Some context about Ethan. He and his wife couldn't have kids, so they adopted a boy, Joey, two years ago. Mike has been making silly, lighthearted jokes that involve Joey's biological parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. I already talked to Mike, and I can tell you that he's 100% meaning no harm, and he just wants to try to get them to react. So fast forward to New Year's Eve. My parents hosted a big celebratory dinner, and Ethan and his wife came. So while we were eating dinner, Mike decided to tell a knock-knock joke to Ethan. He said, knock, knock. Ethan laughed and said, who's there? Mike replied, Joey's biological parents. Then he burst out laughing. Silence took over and Ethan's facial expressions changed. His wife called Mike an idiot, to which Mike replied with, hey, relax, it was just a joke. An argument ensued and dinner was paused. My parents suddenly told Mike to leave, which I thought was too harsh. I tried to speak to them and get them to calm down, but mom insisted that Mike leave. We left and Mike was complaining the whole time about how they overreacted. I called mom later and she told me Mike was out of line with his hurtful jokes about this touchy topic and told me that I was wrong for defending him and saying he was just joking. She said he ruined New Year's for the family, but I told her it was her and dad who ruined the New Year's celebration for escalating the situation and kicking him out. I told her he could talk to them, but again, they were the ones who ruined New Year's celebration. She called me delusional for this statement and hung up. We haven't talked to them for days. I tried contacting Ethan, but no response. You're the jerk. Your husband likes to hurt people. It's nothing to do with jokes. Mike ruined the celebration. Wow, I don't know if I've read such an out-of-touch post on Am I the Jerk ever. Yes, you're the jerk, and so is your husband. Mike has been making silly, light-hearted jokes that involve Joey's biological parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. What the heck? That's terrible. Teasing an infertile couple about their adopted kid's biological parents? I'm mortified. I'm super proud of your parents. Wow, you're the jerk. Sorry, but Mike is a jerk. Not uncommon for the jokesters who love to crack jokes to mess with people. Forget that. It's not in good spirit. It's one-sided bullying and just disgusting. 
It's not lighthearted or silly, it's just mean. The sentence, relax, it was just a joke, is horrible. Your Mike hides behind this excuse to be a jerk and to bully people, to push their buttons, to be mean, and then retreat when they get upset by calling it all a joke. You are enabling and supporting that, which makes you no better. Am I the jerk for selling my dad's house even though his widow lives there? I'm 33, female, and my father passed recently. He had been married to his widow, Penny, for about seven years before. I was not close with my father. We spoke regularly and enjoyed each other's company, but I can't say either of us knew each other very well, for many years before his passing. When he passed, I was surprised to learn that he had left his entire estate to me. He put everything in a trust a year before his passing and I am the sole beneficiary. Besides a small sum that he left to Penny, the lawyer said he was advised not to leave her anything in case she tried to contest it. Everything, including his house, is now mine. My father's lawyers and mine have advised that the will is structured such that it would be near impossible and very expensive to challenge. I don't want my father's money, I don't need it, and given our relationship, I don't feel right using it. However, he obviously wanted me to have it. So, I intend to transfer everything over to my daughter, make her the beneficiary of the trust, and she will have that in addition to her own trust fund once she's of age. However, I do not want to keep my father's house. I do not live in the same country as my father, and I don't want to deal with the admin of his possessions. I want the legal business done, and to close the book on a very painful chapter and grieve quietly. The trouble is, Penny lives in the house. Penny does not work and was financially dependent on my father. So while the lawyers say she could fight to stay living in the house, she likely can't afford legal counsel. Also, because of her lack of income, she would never be able to maintain the house, which is quite large, so I would then have to keep up the house and grounds while she lived there, which I'm not willing to do, both because of the cost and because of the continued involvement with my father's life, which I do not want. I've notified her via the lawyers of the intention to sell the house, which has led to vicious messages from her kids calling me evil and heartless. I understand this is inconvenient for them, nor am I responsible for the people or the mess that he left behind. I'm not doing this to get one over on Penny. I'm just trying to be done with a traumatic part of my life. Am I the jerk? Because of the cost for upkeep that you can't afford, I'm going with not the jerk. Except your father, because I find it horrible that all he left to his widow was a small sum, and even that only to avoid her contesting it. Why on earth was he married to someone he cared so little about? Once you've set a price with your realtor, give her and her family a chance to purchase the house before you list it. Then, if they refuse, go ahead and sell. Not the jerk. This is the right way to do it. Tell her family you're not going to be responsible for the property and are selling, but you will give them the chance to purchase the property before listing it. I have a strong feeling no one will step up. Not the jerk. If Penny has the means, she can buy the house from you, or her kids can buy it for her. If she does not have the means, she was probably planning to mooch off you. When customers passive-aggressively complain, but then refuse to let you fix anything they're complaining about. There's this one young guy who comes to the restaurant frequently and sometimes brings his mom. The guy himself is a nice, chill dude, but his mom is something else. She always injects tiny complaints about everything she orders, but then never wants us to fix it. Here's what happened last time she came in. I take their order. Her. I want the ham and cheese omelette, but with cheddar cheese instead of American. I don't like how the Americans make globs of cheese. Whatever that means. So I ring in the order and it comes up in a few minutes. I double check to make sure the omelette has cheddar cheese instead of American, which it does. I take their food and she pokes it once with her fork. Her. This still has globs of cheese. Me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's made with cheddar instead of American, like you asked. I know, but it still has globs. Oh well, I guess I'll just deal with it. Me. Would you like me to have them remake it for you? And maybe use less cheese so there's not... globs? No, no, I'll just eat it. You know, I went to your competitor restaurant the other day and got an omelette, and the one there was much bigger than this. Me. Oh, that's interesting. You know, I don't like to complain... I just think, you know, when people are paying for food, they should get it the way they want it. Me. I agree. Are you sure you don't want it remade? No, no. I'll survive. She has some passive-aggressive complaint every single time, but still keeps coming back and never lets us remake the food. I can't stand people like this. Constructive criticism is one thing, 
but complaining just to complain makes you seem like a miserable person. Am I the jerk for kicking my friend's boyfriend out of my house after my friends planned a New Year's gathering that I can't attend? Alright, so maybe I am overreacting, but honestly, I've kind of reached a breaking point. I, male 21, am disabled, full-time wheelchair user, and live in a fairly small college town with a couple of friends. My roommates and I are part of a larger friend group of 8 people, and I'd say we're all pretty close. I really love my roommates, they're great, but sometimes a little thick. There's one person in the large friend group, let's call him Chris, who's dating a guy, let's call him James. I really don't like James for many reasons, mostly petty ones to be honest. But another fact, James is vegetarian. That's not a problem in itself, but herein comes the issue. All of us planned on getting dinner on New Year's Eve. Smallish college town, there are three main restaurants to choose from that are open in the nearby area. One of them is a steakhouse, one of them is a Thai place, one of them is a sort of hippie plant-based place. James immediately suggests the plant-based one. I give a veto as it's completely inaccessible and give the alternative of ordering takeout from there and bringing it back to my place. But we recently started fostering a cat and one of our other friends is allergic to cats, so that's also a no-go. None of the other friends are able to host a gathering for various reasons, so I suggest we go to the Thai place. It's a nice spot and very accessible. But apparently, James and Chris went to the Thai place last week for their anniversary and don't want to go back. I then suggest the steakhouse, but of course that's loudly shut down because James is a vegetarian. Long story short, the group did a vote between the hippie place and the Thai place, not even including the steakhouse, and the plant-based place won. I admitted that I was slightly frustrated to my roommates who said that they can bring food back after. I said that that wasn't the issue, but sure. So New Year's Eve comes and they get back from dinner and James and Chris also stop by. At this point it's pretty late and I'm a couple drinks in and I flat out tell James that I think it's crappy that he suggested and then subsequently campaigned for a place that he knows I can't go to. He said that it's fair because I suggested the steakhouse knowing he's a vegetarian. I told him that it's different because he could have, at the very least, physically been present. He insisted that it's the same and I asked him to leave the apartment because I was tired of dealing with his BS. So he left and my roommates think I overreacted. Maybe I did. What do y'all think? Not the jerk. It isn't the same. They could put up with eating at the same restaurant twice in seven days. You cannot change whether a restaurant is accessible. Also, are you telling me that there were zero vegetarian options at the steakhouse? He could have either gone with those or gone back to the place he ate last week. Don't think that would have been too much to ask for someone who is in a wheelchair and literally can't access a place. Not the jerk. Him being vegetarian and you being physically unable to access the restaurant are completely different things. He could have had sides at the steakhouse, or they could have sucked it up and gotten Thai again, or even brought food from the plant-based place to the apartment like you suggested. You gave plenty of options, and they specifically chose the one that directly excluded you. Manager put a target on my back. Many moons ago, while still in school, I landed my first ever job working in retail at Target. Like most jobs in the retail sector, any person that has manager or IC in their job title always seems to act like they have the most important job in the world. I'd been working at the store for a little while, just doing general shelf packing, etc., and customer service before I was called in for the stock take. For those lucky enough not to know, a stock take is just counting every single thing in an entire store within one evening after closing. It was all hands on deck, mostly school-aged kids and a few a little older to do all the work. Gotta target those profits with cheap labor. There were approximately 20 to 30 of us on the floor and we were all given scanners and told to start in the ladies' clothing section. We had used the scanner to scan the item barcode, count how many of the same item are on the rack, enter the quantity, and move on. It must have been 10 to 15 minutes since we had started before manager started yelling at everyone that a clothing rack got missed. This was an unforgivable sin in manager's eyes. She needed to know who missed the rack. Well, as it turned out, I was guilty by proximity. She totally ripped into me about the mistake I supposedly made. Meanwhile, I was just dumbfounded. I didn't know if it was my fault. Anyway, I didn't argue. The manager was quite fiery and proceeded to rip into me, telling me how incompetent I was. She deemed me so incompetent that she took away my assigned scanner. I was told I was not allowed to ever touch another scanner and I had to go out the back into the store's area and help the person doing stock take there. 
I complied. My punishment. For the rest of the night, I had to hang out with this cute girl while hardly working. We were just chatting and joking around by ourselves. Never saw manager again that night. I was climbing around on the top of the storage shelves about 15 meters high in what seemed like Aladdin's cave of big stuffed toys. You could literally dive into the stuffed toys there were so many. I was throwing them at her so she could scan them. She was tossing them back when she was done like a pillow fight. It really was a terrible punishment. After all, I couldn't scan them. That would be too much responsibility for someone like me. Am I the jerk for kicking out a very vocal, child-free flatmate after my wife got pregnant? Basically, my wife and I, 29 male, 24 female, bought our own house a couple of years ago and got two flatmates in to help pay the mortgage. Two bedrooms plus end suite for us to use, one bedroom each plus shared bathroom for the two flatmates. One flatmate, Alex, pretty much keeps to herself. The other one, Caitlin, who's 32, is quite strongly opinionated and much more social. Caitlin is also child-free and occasionally very vocal about it, as in it's not constant, but when something child-related comes up, she will interject without fail. Anyway, wife and I were finally successful in conceiving and decided to tell both of our flatmates three months into the pregnancy. We chose three months as we didn't want to announce it to anyone too early in case anything happened, but also wanted to give flatmates plenty of time to find somewhere else if they, understandably, didn't want to live with a newborn. In the end, both said they wanted to stay flatting with us as the location is good and the house is a new build. Most houses in my country are cold and damp, turn-of-the-century wooden cottages. Anyway, almost immediately after this, Caitlin begins making snide remarks about our soon-to-be-born child. Things like she should get a discount on rent for putting up with a baby. She's not going to get any sleep with a baby in the house. We should have told them we were trying, etc. At first, my wife just brushed these off though I did have a word with Caitlin that they're not appreciated. Since then, the snide remarks became more frequent and rude. Example, calling us selfish for bringing another child into the world, saying our social lives are going to be over, etc. After a couple months in this, I decided that I didn't want to put up with this kind of negativity in what will be a very stressful but also special time of my life. I consulted with my wife and with her support have decided to kick Caitlin out of our house. As a flatmate without a formal signed rental agreement, she actually has no tenancy rights in my country, though I still opted to give her a month to find a new place as a sign of good faith. Caitlin is throwing a fit, saying I'm being unfair, that since she pays rent, she should have a say in the direction of the household, and that we were selfish for having a kid without even telling our flatmates. Alex is on the fence though, has expressed that I'm being a bit unfair to Caitlin. Wife, as I said, fully supports me, though she's less annoyed by her behavior than myself, if I'm being honest. So yeah, am I the jerk? There are two types of child-free people. One just doesn't wish to have kids, but they accept that they're part of life and usually enjoy interacting with them. The second type can't stand kids and makes everyone around them miserable. Your flatmate is the latter. If she stayed, she would get even more obnoxious after the baby arrives. I mean, how dare she say that you should consult her about your family planning? Kick her out in good conscience, not the jerk. My sister dined and dashed at a restaurant. I refused to pay her bill and gave them her information. This happened last night. My sister and her boyfriend recently moved to a town next to mine. I was excited as we'll be able to see more of each other now. Nearby, there's a downtown center that has a lot of shopping, restaurants, galleries, etc. There's one upscale restaurant that both my husband and I love. A dinner for two will run you about $200 to $250, so it's not a place we frequently go to. My sister called me last week and invited us out to dinner with them at the restaurant last night. I reminded her it was an upscale place and to take a look at the menu beforehand because they are pricey and we can go somewhere else, tons of other great places. She said they still wanted to go. We hadn't been there in a while, so we accepted. Dinner was great. At the end of the meal, my sister excuses herself to the bathroom and when she doesn't come back, relatively soon, her boyfriend goes to find her. After a while, neither of them come back. We go to check for them and they're gone. I call and text her and she texts back that they've left, but thanks for dinner. It was just as amazing as you said it would be. I asked her what she meant, but no response. I texted again, asking if she really just stuck us with the bill and no response. I then texted that I never agreed to pay for them and that she had 30 minutes to come back to the restaurant 
or I'll give the restaurant all her information and they will likely involve the police. No response. At the 30 minute mark, I called and texted and got no response, so I stayed true to my word. I paid for mine and my husband's portion and gave all her information to the manager for their portion and then left. The next day, she called me back upset that she's been getting calls from the restaurant asking her to come pay or they'll contact the police. I said I'm not surprised since she skipped out on her bill. She said she thought I was paying the tab since I've paid for our dinners in the past. I've paid for her plus me only dinners where the total tab was $60 max. I said this was obviously different than the other times we met for dinner. This was all four of us and at an upscale restaurant. I was not paying the $450 tab and she had to cover her portion. I reminded her that she invited us out and chose the restaurant. I specifically asked if she wanted to go somewhere else, but she's the one who insisted on going to this restaurant. I never agreed to pay for everyone. She then said she thought I'd just pay, but when I asked the waiter for separate checks, she realized I wasn't and left for the bathroom planning to ditch. I said that since the restaurant hadn't contacted the police yet, all she had to do was go in and pay and it would be settled. She didn't want to do that because it would be too embarrassing and asked me to cover it. I again said no and that she had to take care of it. Our family has gotten involved and I'm being pressured to just pay the bill. Am I the jerk if I don't and let the restaurant call the police? Clearly, I will not be paying for anything ever again. Edit. Only answering a few questions as I'm seeing that I'm not the jerk and it's only been less than an hour. This event really made me feel like a piggy bank and not a sister, which is the most upsetting. We are all early to mid-30s. She's never really been this terrible, but she has almost always found a way to bring my salary into conversations. For example, the first time I met her boyfriend, we were talking about cars as he just bought a brand new car. I said I'd like to get into a new car, but that I can't afford it right now. True, I'm a saver and not a spender. And her response was, You make this much. You can definitely afford that car. This event really made me feel like a piggy bank and not a sister, which is the most upsetting. Not the jerk. Your sister and her boyfriend's behavior was so gross. It is commonly understood that the assumption is that the bill will be split unless previously agreed that one person is paying. Tell your family to pay her bill if they are so concerned. Not the jerk. Why doesn't the family that's pressuring you pay for the bill? Not the jerk. She admitted that when you asked for two checks, she decided to ditch you. She has to pay for her own meals. If she invited you to dinner and chose the restaurant, she should have known that you obviously weren't going to pay for her. She sounds really childish and the family has no business to pressure you into paying her bill. Well, what would you have done in this situation? Would you have given the restaurant your sister's information or would you have just paid for her? Please let us know. I would have given them all of her info. She thinks she can use you, OP. Prove her wrong. Professor fails me because my group went ghost during group project. So I was in a speech class. It was my last semester completely online due to lockdown. Our professor assigned us a group speech that we were to record and send to him by the due date. I thought it would be easy enough as he gave us two weeks to work on it and group speeches weren't anything new to me. He even made separate discussion boards for our groups that we could use to communicate. This project was worth 30% of our grades, so failing this project meant you would pretty much fail the course. I wanted to get it done early so we wouldn't have to worry about it, so I immediately post a message to everyone in the group asking when they were free to do a Zoom meeting to discuss the project. No reply for a few days by any of them. I then post again, this time a little more stern as it didn't seem any of them cared enough to even reply at all. I waited a few more days. At this point, we only had a week left before it was due, so I just divided up the work and posted what everyone would need to write their portion of the speech about and gave them a date slash time that I would be holding a Zoom meeting for the final recording to send to the professor. Still no reply. It was now the day before the speech was to be recorded and two days before the speech was due and my group members had not made an attempt to make contact in any form at all. So I did the only thing I could think of and emailed my professor explaining the situation. But I assumed he would not reply because throughout the entire semester it took him over a week to reply to any emails I had sent him. I then did the entire group project on my own which took me the entire night with no sleep. After I finished writing everyone's speech, it was around the time I had scheduled the Zoom meeting to record. I joined it out of amusement, knowing nobody in my group would be there. Sure enough, it was empty. So I did the entire speech myself. 
but the rubric really put emphasis on transitioning to the other group members, including saying their name. So between every section where it would cut to a different member, I would say something like, and now my name will explain the importance of blah, blah, blah. Then mute my screen briefly as if to add a cut, put on a different hat and continue the speech. I did this for all six portions of the speech. I turned in the speech shortly after and filled out the group member role sheet that was due as well. I just put my name in every box that was supposed to be a different member. A week passes and I see he graded the project, still not replying to my previous email about the situation by the way, and he gave me a zero, stating it was supposed to be a group project and me doing it solo meant I did not follow instructions. I was actually infuriated by this and knew that emailing him about the grade was as good as useless, so I went straight above him to the board of college and explained to them what happened. They apologized and said the situation would be resolved and within a few hours of me talking to the board, he had replied to my email three times stating that he was very sorry for the miscommunication about the project and that my grade would be corrected, scolded me for going above him saying, I should have just emailed him again if I couldn't get in contact with my classmates and putting the blame on me for not trying harder to reach out to them. The next semester, I saw that he was no longer with the school. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Horrible professors are many in number and should all be sacked. My guess is that it was a habit of his to not reply to emails and he got fired for it. Also, his corrected grade was a 70, but I was so mentally exhausted from the situation at that point that I didn't care to fight it anymore. Many professors believe that group projects are the closest you'll find to the real world, and they're probably right if they include real world accountability. Where they go off track is when they fail to account for the fact that the individual student is paying for the class and should receive a grade based on their specific contributions and achievements. After all, there's no such thing as a group transcript or a group degree. It's unfair and unreasonable to punish a diligent student for the inaction of lazy students if they haven't simultaneously provided a mechanism for the diligent student to hold their lazy peers accountable. If one person manages to produce an adequate result in spite of others not doing their part, I'd give them maximum credit. If they produce a superior result, I'd give extra credit. If they were unable to produce a viable result and could demonstrate that this was primarily because others refused to participate, I'd simply not count that assignment as part of their final grade. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.